exclusive. We have two presumptive cases of coronavirus here locally, one in Hillsborough County and the other in Manatee County. And right now, Governor Ron DeSantis is in Tampa you to know, talk about night, this. Let's listen in. That there are two presumptive positive cases of coronavirus disease in the state of Florida. Uh, the first patient's an adult resident in Manatee County without travel history to China or other countries identified for restricted travel by the CDC. The second patient is an adult resident in Hillsborough County with a recent history of travel to the affected areas in Italy. In total, 23 people have been tested in the state of Florida. The state is currently monitoring 184, um, and in total, 795 uh, have been monitored. Now, those two individuals that tested positive remain in isolation at this time. Uh, despite these cases, the overall immediate threat to the public remains low. Uh, with that said, we do anticipate that uh, more will test, test, test positive, uh, and we have taken additional actions to help contain the virus's spread. Last night, I issued an executive order establishing the Department of Health under Dr. Rivke's leadership as the agency responsible for the response and coordination of the relevant state agencies for the COVID-19 response. In the order, I also directed the Department of Health to declare a public health emergency to better equip our state with the resources needed to handle this threat. The public health emergency ensures that health care providers, hospitals, and labs immediately report all suspected cases to the Department of Health. It also advises individuals of the proper protective measures that need to be taken regarding the possible exposure to COVID-19. Now, individuals that have traveled to an area that the CDC has issued a warning level three or alert level two travel health notice or those that have been in contact with someone who has traveled to those places should immediately contact the Florida Department of Health upon developing symptoms. These symptoms include fever, cough, shortness of breath, or difficulty breathing. Current countries at a level three travel health notice include China, Iran, South Korea, Italy, Japan is at an alert level two. Um, as many of you know, there have been um, extensive restrictions regarding travel from certain parts of China. Uh, we believe that there will be uh, more restrictions in terms of Italy that the federal government um, is going to undertake. Uh, that would obviously be helpful for us as we're looking uh, to stop the spread of the virus. Um, the public health emergency also advises individuals who believe they may have been exposed to COVID-19 to contact their local county health department prior to traveling to any physician's office, emergency department, hospital, or urgent care center. Um, if you look at this virus, the vast, vast majority of people who acquire it will not require hospitalization. Um, and so if you work through your, your local provider or county health department, rather than showing up at an urgent care center, that will help uh, with the resources uh, for, for other needs. And I've also asked Dr. Rivkes to work with Health Secretary or ACA Secretary Mayhew to ensure that our assisted living facilities and nursing homes are taking adequate precautions, particularly those who will be um, uh, have entry to those. If you look at how this uh, virus has unfolded, folks who are middle aged, younger, healthy, tend to weather it fine. It tends to have a del most deleterious effect on people that have either underlying health conditions or that are elderly. Um, so we believe that that's a priority and they're going to be working uh, in conjunction with those facilities to ensure that their residents are protected. Uh, the Department of Health under Scott's leadership has been fully engaged from really the beginning of January uh, with their response and epidemiology teams uh, working on this issue. The Department of Health is now able to test for coronavirus here in Florida. Labs in Tampa, here, Jacksonville, and Miami can conduct the tests. Uh, this allows test results to be available within 24 to 48 hours. Currently, CDC is taking up to five days uh, for results. Obviously, they have a lot of uh, testing that they're having to do. We have an incident management team in place, and we're working in lockstep with the CDC, receiving multiple updates daily. Hundreds of dedicated DOH professionals are responding, including staff central office and in each of our 67 county health departments. We've also engaged the medical community through correspondence and weekly calls and have established a, a DOH website related to COVID-19, www.floridahealth.gov backslash COVID hyphen 19. 
This is the best and most up-to-date source for information and guidance regarding the virus in Florida. State of Florida is fully committed doing everything we can uh, to respond to the COVID-19 virus. I have spoken with both Senate President Bill Galvano and Speaker Jose Oliva. Um, I'm working with Dr. Rips, Rivkes and, and Dr. Robertson about any immediate funding that we may need. Um, and mostly we're talking about personnel. Um, and they were receptive to work with uh, my office uh, to make sure that the needs are met. Uh, so I would just tell people, you know, the risk remains low. Uh, please heed the advice of the CDC and local health care professionals. You hear some of the things about washing your hands and not taking, touching your mouth and your, your nose and your eyes. I mean, that really is uh, the best way to, uh, to, to, to make precautions here. Um, and I think that uh, uh, we're working diligently to, and Scott will go into a little bit more detail, I think, on some of the things that are be doing specifically. Um, but our goal is to, uh, to contain this um, and uh, make sure we're ensuring public health. So with that, I'll let the doctors come up and say a few words, and then we'll be happy to answer any questions you guys have. Scott? Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you, Governor. Uh, thank you all for being here. I want to begin by thanking Lieutenant Governor Nunes and Governor DeSantis for their incredible support uh, as we are facing this, and also our other partner agencies. Preparing for this new virus is what public health is all about. As the governor mentioned, we have two presumed cases in Florida. This means that these individuals have tested positive in state laboratories and are waiting further confirmation uh, from the CDC. Our uh, uh, wishes and thoughts are with these individuals. The first individual is a male in his 60s from Manatee County who is hospitalized for evaluation and treatment for pneumonia. This individual is currently stable and remains hospitalized. At the present time, it is not known how this individual was exposed to COVID-19. The Florida Department of Health is working closely with this individual, his close contacts, and health care providers to isolate and monitor any individuals who may have come in contact with this virus. And we'll be implementing testing of any individual who may develop symptoms of COVID-19, which is shortness of breath, fever, or a cough. The second patient is a woman in her 20s from Hillsborough County who recently returned from Northern Italy. Northern Italy is a site of a large outbreak of COVID-19. This individual is currently stable and remains under continued isolation in medical care at home. The Florida Department of Health is working closely with this individual, her close contacts, health care providers to isolate and monitor individuals who may have been exposed. COVID-19 is a respiratory virus transmitted like the flu. Symptoms of COVID-19 are fever, cough, and shortness of breath. Symptoms may occur as soon as two days after exposure or as long as 14 days. As the governor mentioned, most individuals with COVID-19 will have a mild case. 80% of individuals will be able to be treated and observed at home. Up to 15% of individuals may have a more severe case requiring hospitalization. Up to 5% of individuals, this may be especially severe. In the elderly and those individuals with underlying medical conditions like high blood pressure, heart problems, obesity, and diabetes may be more prone to develop serious complications should they contract COVID-19. There is no vaccine to prevent COVID-19. At the present time, we do not have any medications to treat COVID-19. Thus, care is supportive. Since we have two presumptive positive cases of COVID-19 in Florida, I would to like to announce several measures for our residents and visitors to follow. First, regarding travel. Before planning overseas travel, please refer to the CDC website, which identifies areas of travel concern. In addition to China, there are currently large outbreaks of COVID-19 taking place in Northern Italy, South Korea, uh, South Korea, and Iran, with more than 1,500 cases there. If you are returning from these areas, we are asking that you self-isolate for 14 days after returning.
please refer to the Department of Health website for what this involves. This applies going forward to individuals returning from these areas and from individuals who have returned from these areas within the past 14 days. If you are self-isolating and become ill, please contact the county health department or your health care provider before seeking medical attention. We'll be sure that guidance is and proper protection are taken when we obtain uh, your samples. Regarding medical facilities, all health care facilities and health care providers are asked to review the expanded definitions as to when to consider COVID-19 in an individual. This includes individuals returning from areas of global high outbreak uh, within the past 14 days and lower respiratory disease uh, symptoms. This includes individuals returning from China, South Korea, Iran, Italy, and some parts of Japan. We also are now including individuals who have new onset lower respiratory disease without a known cause as individuals who should be considered for COVID-19. Please contact your local county health departments when you're evaluating such individuals. We will assist in their evaluation collections of samples. As the governor mentioned, we are now doing testing in Miami, Tampa, and Jacksonville. Healthcare providers and workers are reminded that all individuals who are being evaluated either in the outpatient or inpatient setting for lower respiratory tract illnesses should have respiratory or aerosol precautions in place. Please refer to CDC and DOH guidelines, uh, guidelines for this. We need to protect our health care workers from getting COVID-19. Regarding nursing homes and other residential facilities, recently an outbreak of COVID-19 was reported in a nursing home in the state of Washington. Please review your visitation policies and consider restricting visitations. Please screen all visitors for being ill and restrict anybody with sinus from visiting. Universities. Colleges and universities are areas of high density interactions and housing, and many have international programs, as do some secondary schools. Please refer to CDC guideline travel restrictions. If you have students returning from high, high outbreak areas, please assist these individuals in self-isolating for 14 days after their return. Commissioner Corcoran will be working and helping to get messaging out about this important issue. If any of these individuals become ill, please contact our county health departments so we can assist in their evaluation. And lastly, for the general public, as the governor mentioned, the risk to the general population is currently low. You can go about your normal business, but there are ways that you can protect yourself from COVID-19. Avoid close contact with individuals who are sick. Stay home when you are ill. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth with unwashed hands. Cover your cough with, uh, or sneezes with tissues and then disposing of the tissue. And wash your hands frequently with soap and water. These are measures that will protect you. Today is an important day for all of us. We will continue to provide regular updates as this is a rapidly evolving situation. Please see the Department of Health website, which the governor referred to. The site will also direct you to the Center for Disease Control website as well. In closing, I express my thanks to Lieutenant Governor Nunez, Governor DeSantis, mm -hmm. members of the Florida legislature, our federal government, especially the CDC, and our fellow state agencies. I very also very much want to thank the members of the Florida Department we're playing a tremendous role in protecting public. Thank you. Dr. Robertson. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity here today. We have an integrated accredited public health system in Florida, which includes 67 county health departments and three public health laboratories and many partners that we are working with to respond to COVID-19. Please remember after to the affected regions that are experiencing sustained community spread of COVID-19, which include China, South Korea, 
Iran, or Italy and have symptoms of either fever, cough, or shortness of breath, or have been in contact with a confirmed COVID-19 patient within 14 days of symptoms onset, or you are a person with severe respiratory illness without an alternative diagnosis, please call your county health department to help facilitate transport. This is what a person can expect if they present to a health care facility to be tested for COVID-19. If you meet these definitions and you are a person under investigation, that health care provider will take specimens, oral, nasal, and sputum, which is also saliva. They will then work with the county health department to either send or take that specimen to the public health laboratory. And then if it's negative, it stops there. And if it's presumptive positive, we are sending at the current time to CDC for confirmatory testing. Approximately the time for test results are 24 to 48 hours. And we are taking all necessary precautions at that time to isolate those individuals and prevent the spread of disease. Once individuals are identified as a person under investigation, we are then working to identify their contacts and reduce the spread of COVID-19. I just want to reiterate, we are poised and equipped to respond to COVID-19 in Florida. Great. Any questions? Governor, before you wrap up with uh, Channel 10, can you tell me why it took five days to test the patient in Manatee um, County? Scott? Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, on Friday, we announced expanded uh, consideration of COVID-19 to include individuals with respiratory disease of unknown origin. And it was that important alert that actually came out from the Department of Health that resulted in the facility uh, collecting the samples Friday and sending it to us. Also, this gets into the issue of testing, as some of you may have heard. <coughs> There was a delay in testing. On Thursday, the Center for Disease Control actually sent out new protocols for the kits they had sent. Friday, our Department of Health teams, including right here, worked on optimizing the new conditions. And on Saturday, we were ready to test. So in this situation, samples collected Friday when we issued our new guidelines and was run on Saturday. So with that delay, how many others were exposed to this? Uh, this is something that we're working with the hospital on to identify other individuals who would be exposed. If an individual is exposed, uh, those individuals are being evaluated and those individuals will self-isolate for 14 days. Why did it take so long to get the information out to the general public? This was out on Facebook yesterday. Doctors Hospital put out a letter to their doctors, to their patients yesterday. Uh, the health department didn't put out a press release until yesterday evening. Why did it take so long? As soon as we became aware that this individual had uh, COVID-19, which actually was Saturday evening, we launched an immediate response, which is what our goal is, and that is first to make sure the individual is stable, and then also uh, to employ containment measures, which has to do with identification of individuals who may have been exposed. So as soon as the, we became aware, that this individual had COVID-19, measures were put in place in terms of uh, containment and launching an uh, evaluation of individuals who now may be at risk. Now, you this 24 hours before it was publicly announced? We became aware of this uh, Saturday evening. And it, in, terms of, in terms of what the process is at the present time, is that these individuals are identified as presumptive positives because we're doing the state laboratory. And then according to the CDC, we're supposed to send the samples to them where they do confirmatory testing. We are still awaiting on that. But because uh, of the situation, and we had already launched full measures in terms of containment and evaluation, we decided that even though while we are waiting for the CDC, it was important to go ahead and inform the public. That's a very important question, and this is a point that we actually had commented on. So starting uh, three weeks ago, we have had weekly calls with the healthcare community in the state of Florida. Uh, we knew this was coming and having individuals be prepared. So we, right from the very beginning, 
have uh, had have asked the institutions to refer refer to their uh, planning, respiratory precautions, make sure they have enough protective equipment, and so the procedures are in place so that the healthcare workers can be protected. Do we know how recently the case was in Italy and what the exposure was like, say, on the plane when she was returned from Italy? Do we know if there are any protocols in place for that? I don't have information at the present time, but uh, we're working with CDC and our health department as far as uh, evaluating all of those issues. Out of the 184 people that you are monitoring, how many of them involve travel? So in terms of individuals we are currently following, so let me break it down to a couple of different categories. So we have individuals that we consider persons under investigation or have been. These are individuals who would be high risk suspected of that. We have tested 15 individuals. These individuals have been negative. There are two individuals uh, who are presumptive positive, which we talked about, and then we're waiting on six other individuals. And then we have another group of individuals. These are individuals who had returned from mainland China, and these individuals are self-isolating at home. There have been more than 800 individuals that we have monitored, and within that, are 184 individuals that the governor referred to that we are currently monitoring. How many have been travel, uh, the 184 individuals are specific individuals who have returned from mainland China, not from the Hubei province. So all travel, sir. With, 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 the, delay with the delay of the testing, with the delay of the testing of the man in Manatee, are you concerned? How likely is it that there is going to be more cases of coronavirus moving forward the next couple of days? Uh, it's very important, you know, this is a new virus that we're continuing to learn about. And with the expanded definition for coronavirus, to consider this in situations where an individual has lower respiratory tract disease and you can't find it, as we are testing more individuals, and we can do this now in each of our state laboratories, we'll get more information as to how common this is going to be. I don't have information on that at present. Can I just one more question. Right? <clears throat> Yesterday evening, we called the Department of Health out of Sarasota and they called this a hoax, completely false, only to backtrack hours later with the press release. Why would they call it a hoax? It's a strong language. I can only comment on the fact that uh, we are all here right now today uh, to inform about this important development within our state. Uh, we've always uh, been very proactive in terms of letting the public know that this is coming and how to prepare ourselves and excuse me excuse me right. um, i'll just say um so we um just to kind of answer i think your question there i mean we and i said in my comments you know we are anticipating that there will be addition of po uh, additional positive tests um you know the gentleman that was hospitalized did not before the cdc guidance change fit the criteria where you would test for COVID-19 because he had not been exposed to travel and we don't think he had been exposed necessarily to people who had been although I think that that's under investigation um, and so the you know, you know the follow-on for that will be we, we think that there'll likely be more the uh, young woman who came back from Italy um, you know did have a roommate who is now under self-isolation um, you know we anticipate that, that that is somebody that was probably exposed um, I don't think that's someone that's a Florida resident I think it's a different state uh, so it wouldn't necessarily count as Florida but obviously the precautions are being taken um, so uh, you know our goal is to you know limit this spread um, you know of COVID-19 and I think from the beginning um, you know the Department of Health in Florida they, they've been very proactive I mean you don't monitor all these people I mean that involves personal visits you know that involves checking uh, people's temperatures um, and so so they've been very diligent about this and then obviously with these cases you know they've proactively been been uh, contacting the people who may have had interactions uh, with the patients and so we're going to continue to do that um, I'm glad that we're going to get support uh, if we do need some additional funding from the legislature and I hope that um, you know the US Congress um, you know will be able to do something um, soon I know they talk a lot about different things and, and they have their own views but they 
they, you know, oftentimes don't don't act quick enough. So uh, so we hope to see that. So thank you. So we've just been listening to Governor Ron DeSantis and Florida Surgeon General here for this press conference. And here's a quick recap. Two presumptive cases here locally. We have one adult in Manatee County, one adult in Hillsborough County. Um, and that person actually traveled to Italy and they've both tested positive for the coronavirus. Yeah, and in terms of the 60-year-old man in Manatee County, they say he is in stable condition. He remains hospitalized, but they don't know where he may have contracted it. Um, really, I think the message this morning is how much they're amping up their efforts. They're really going to ask people to self-quarantine for 14 days if they think they may have it. And then the other thing I found interesting is uh, they said if you think you possibly could have COVID-19, uh, self-isolate and then contact the health department before you seek medical attention. That's a good point. I also wanted to make note of this. 23 people have been tested thus far here in the state of Florida and people who travel to a country in question where the coronavirus is an issue or if they came in contact with someone in question, they need to check in with the Florida Health Department. And we're going to have much, much more on this coming up.